Hey everybody, I'm Jeff Bull, Manager of Developer Advocacy. And my name is Julio Gomez, my principal architect focus on programmability. Julio, it's really awesome to have you here. Um, it's my first time being overseas at all, um, and especially at Cisco Live Europe, which has been super fun, and obviously we're here in the DevNet zone. Um, and you and I were talking a bit ahead of time, and you know, kind of catching up on what we teach here, uh, not just at Cisco Live, but specifically in the DevNet zone. All the sessions we've had in the last couple of days have really centered around this idea of, you know, the term DevOps, or here DevOps. And I thought it would be kind of interesting, based on the work that you tend to do, maybe you can tell everyone a bit more about what you do. Why this, what is this term DevOps really? And why is it important to anybody who's showing up here? Or why should it be important to anyone coming here who's been doing this for a while, is at the beginning of their learning journey? Like, why is this an important thing for everyone? Well, uh, in my case, my remit is focused on making sure that we nurture a community of people. Usually, they are network engineers with a background of 20 years on, you know, routing protocols and, you know, VLAN, uh, uh, spanning tube protocol, basically. So, uh, right, right now, these days, they need to go into new skills like DevOps, and um, sometimes it's not natural for them. And the, the main reason is that they don't really see how the future will look like and how they need to adapt to that. So it's very funny to, to see people morphing into this new profile by learning about uh, this new skill set. And the main reason why we think that DevOps is really, really critical for network engineers is, I would say, twofold. On one side, it's uh, focused on the idea that developers are king makers. You know, developers are the ones that really create the way that line of business owners communicate with the outside world, with a global audience. So how do you, how do you make yourself relevant to them? You don't, they don't speak VLAN, they don't speak OSPF, they, they, they speak a different language, a different slang. Mm -hmm. So if you want to be relevant to them, you need to understand the daily challenges. So if you want to follow the money from a cost-optimized you know, uh, center like IT into a revenue-optimized you know, center like line of business owners, you need to speak their language. So it's, it's about following the money, you know? The opportunities are going on uh, at a much faster pace with line of business owners and with developers. So that's on one side. You want to learn DevOps because you want to be relevant to this new generation of kingmakers. On the other side, I think that DevOps principles apply exactly with the same kind of benefits to network configuration and management. And that's what we call net DevOps. So if you want to learn about net DevOps, you need to understand why it is relevant for software developers. And that's the, the, the point where you say, okay, well, I want to replicate this into the network configuration and management. I can use exactly the same principles, and very often we can even use the same tool set. So that's very, very interesting. And you need to learn about you know, the software developer, the software development related to go into network related. Um, one of the key things here is to understand that application developers are focused on the overall time to market of their applications. So if they develop something very quickly and they want to put it in production very quickly, a bug fix or a new feature, it doesn't work if they have to wait for two weeks for the network people to implement that change. So that's why we see that it's a, for, for an overall time to market that is optimized, you need to have both pieces, DevOps and NetDevOps. You know, it's, I'm, that was a great overview. And I think one of the things I really want to hone in on there for a, a moment, the, the number of things you said, one of the things I want to hone in for the audience a little bit, like we hear the term DevOps, so I wanted to kind of break it down a tiny bit. There's two contexts I think I often hear, about, before we kind of get back to the application side, um, there's two contexts I typically hear the phrase DevOps, or the, the, act, the term DevOps in. One of them is, in, is the methodology, and that's what DevOps is. It's a methodology, it's a framework, it's not a, it's not a thing. The t it is used as a title oftentimes, but it's not, they're not synonymous necessarily. So there's sort of a team that is implemented and works together using DevOps principles, um, and then that's really what DevOps is. It's a set of principles, it's a framework for how to, how to run a team that works on you know, developing an application, traditionally, developing an application, and then other people who are on that team who typically do more of the operational side to help the people who are doing the development. And to kind of use that baseline as a way to come back to what you were talking about, um, I, I think that's a really, it, it gives us a good place to be able to say, so app developers traditionally have used frameworks like Agile or DevOps in some cases. How, and when we talk that DevOps, how do most infrastructure, traditionally infrastructure-based people or focused people, like we have here at Cisco Live, how can they, in their minds, sort of bridge the gap between, as one of our DEs would say, click ops, you know, fingers on keyboards. How can we, how can they think about, trend, uh, like transitioning from traditional click ops to doing more either automation or really DevOps, to have more of a DevOps type mindset in what they, in the work that they do every day. I think um, 
Everyone in the world looks for inspiration in any aspect of your life. So I think here it's exactly the same. We need inspiration. We need to see how others are doing it and how they are being successful so that you get inspired by that and want to achieve the same kind of uh, success. So um, I think it's critical here to understand that if you continue doing things in the same way, you're going to be very limited. If I'm doing manual stuff at 3 a.m. in a maintenance window, you know, that, that's going to you know, play for so long. But I really need to find a way to automate that way, that, that way of managing my networks, but also because network outages are kind of the, the biggest problem that we see on customers worldwide. You know, people are concerned about human interaction, how that's prone to error. So the moment that you see someone doing things with an automation pipeline, that's when you understand the value. You need to, to be inspired by seeing you know, this implemented. From DevRel, we have the option of seeing some demonstrations that actually prove on what is the art of the possible. That demonstrates, hey, this is real. And you can implement it on top of our platform APIs and using a tool set that it's very, very common, not only for um, network engineers, but also for developers. We see the tools have been common in many aspects. Not only the philosophy about, hey, doing testing before going into production, having a virtualized environment, everything is exactly the same approach, the same philosophy that we see in software development. I, you know what, I'm really glad that you described it that way. Um, one of, this, this, there's something I'm about to, about to say that might sound a little controversial, but it comes up often in sessions we do, conversations we have with some members of the community, and some people watching will probably feel a little bit of this when I say it, is, but if I automate all these things, I may automate myself out of a job. I may not have a job anymore. And it's one of my favorite things to, like, through lines to grab onto and say, no, no, let's talk about that for a moment because everything you just described is really centering around human creativity. Somebody automating themselves out of having to do something manual in a change window means I don't have to stay up that late at night to make sure I may have to be around pager duty or whatever, but I don't have to sit there and type all the things and hope to gosh I don't do it wrong, hit the wrong copy and paste, do it at the wrong time. It happens and I can check it and make sure it worked afterwards or I can roll it back very easily, which leaves your brain free to do things like, I don't know, sleep. So when you get up in the morning, you can put that, that brain power into some creative things that you're trying to advance and move forward in your company. And I really think that's super interesting that you bring it up because that's really what we're talking about. It's not trying to automate or simplify so that you're not necessary as a creative in the process. It's to empower you to become more creative and solve more, much more interesting problems that your business or your organization has. Um, what sort of experience have you had? Experiences have you had talking to customers or partners when it comes to kind of helping them see a way, a path forward to that end state? Um, I think that concern is very, very valid, and everyone is asking the same kind of question, like, hey, am I going to be automated out of my job? Well, no. What we are expecting is for us human beings to not focus on something that we are not good at, which is repeating things again and again and again. Because we lose focus, we are not designed to do the same repetitive tasks again and again and again. We have a, he a, a brain that is actually focused on being creative and solving problems, and we want to do that once and then have something else do it repetitively for us. And that's exactly what we are trying to do here with automation, to make sure that the APIs provide the way to programmatically approach these problems and enable automation driven by APIs. So when people are concerned about that, my main question to them is, what would you rather do? As you say, you want to go 3 a.m. to the NOC and change SNMP community strings in a thousand routers, you know, with your notepad, copy paste, copy paste, or would you rather sleep at home? The answer, by the way, is no. You don't want to <laughs> change a thousand different community strings. <laughs> so yeah, definitely that's, that's the right answer. And that answer applies to basically everything. And I, say, I see that uh, intelligent people are kind of lazy as well. I mean, we don't want to do repetitive sta tasks all the time. So that's why I see that uh, more and more we need inspiration to showcase what can be done, what, 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 can be, what, what is what we call the art of the possible, right? What is enabled by these APIs and what the, what, what the automation principles actually enable in an operation of networks at scale. That's exactly the focus that we have on that. Right? I, yes, everything you just said. I have nothing else to add to that. So as we kind of wrap up, I thought it might be interesting to give you a chance to kind of walk everyone who's watching this video and is like interested in literally, what do I do first? What do I do next? If you could give, leave everyone with a couple steps that they can take to get on the journey towards a DevOps sort of future, what would that, what would you suggest? 
my call to action here would be go to your browser, open developer.cisco.com, look for your area of interest, any platform that you're interested or working on, and try to get started by start now, learning the initial foundational blocks, learn some Python, learn whatever you need to get started as per the guidance, and with that, you will just love it. You will just grow based on that. It's going gonna, it's gonna to grow naturally and organically on yourself. I appreciate that. Um, and as Julio mentioned, developer.cisco.com, we have, as you mentioned, we have learning labs, hands-on learning labs. You can get your hands in there. You don't have to download anything. You just work on it. There's code samples you can go grab. Some of them are simple code samples. Many of them are actual full automation solutions. You can grab and go use yourself right now. There's hands-on sandboxes. There's just a lot of resources available too. Or if you just need API documentation, that's all listed there as well. Julio, thank you so much for being here. Really appreciate it. And thank you all for joining us again. Uh, for any more content from Cisco Live, developer.cisco.com slash Cisco Live. We'll catch you later.